There's no climate deniers in Tigran countries. They know what's happening. Climate change on Tigran is going to be profound. It's already profound. 20, 30 years ago, you could rely on a monsoon in various places starting on virtually on a particular day. And now you can't say the monsoon with any certainty will start in a month, yet alone on a day. I don't think you would find a tea grower on earth that has not been affected in some way by climate change. We're seeing freak stuff happening, a lot of freak stuff. Hail in the middle of summer, rain not coming when it's supposed to, great big deluge when it's a bit too dry to take a deluge, when the, when the earth's really dry and we get a lot of rain, we get a lot of washout, so that we lose nutrients, we lose the stability of the gardens. The most drastic change that I've seen is not just in the climate change, but it's also in the soil change, in the water change. There's some lands that just can't produce anymore. And they may have started using a conventional method of growing, using the assistance of fertilizers, uh, but there's a certain point when your soil becomes styrofoam, essentially, where you just there's not enough fertilizers that could be added and the water can't be maintained in the soil. And so this becomes a logistical nightmare for a farmer that's trying to, to grow a product. So if your harvests are delayed, or if they're changed and less demanded in the market, that can have a very serious effect on the communities and the land. So all these things are problematic. So unpredictability makes it very hard for people to grow tea in the way they always did, and then make it in the way they always did. It means that they need to not only adapt to their garden practice, to an ever-changing situation, but then once the leaf is produced, they can't just rely on the systems that they've been using. They have to have more artisanal sensibility to make the correct call to uh, change the manufacturing technique to the way they need. If you talk to an old uh, tea broker, he'll tell you that uh, Sam tea had a jammy flavor. When they were really, really good, it was fruity and it was just like very old strawberry jam. And now that, that just that doesn't happen anymore. You don't get a hint of that. In Sri Lanka, the uva flavor, the, the wintergreen flavor, which comes in upon the, uh, the high slopes, that's disappeared. I was teaching an English girl to make tea up there. And on her little estate, we actually found the uva flavor. I took it to a broker and he almost wept to, to be reminded of it. And it's just a change in, in the climate which makes these things which were common, now very rare, and as I'm afraid in the future, they will disappear. The openness and willingness to make new styles of tea, uh, to innovate on it, but ultimately what, what we all need and what they need is uh, a dedication and commitment to biodiversity and to the idea of biodiversity and questioning uh, if monoculture is the right way to do things. Conventionally in business, that was the only right way we could do it. That was the only way you could optimize your land, but now we're seeing there are very serious consequences uh, to these, these changes and to what's going on in the climate and with their land. And just like with adapting your processing to take in the new style of leaf, the land and the soil and the water will do the same exact thing if you allow it to do that. I think the main thing is flexibility and adaptability and systems that are more focused on that. We need to use smaller systems. I think the very big plantation systems are harder to hop one way or the other. So I think using smaller systems, smaller groups of people, more regional production, where they can have the artisanal sensibility to make a necessary change in this way or that. I think that's going to be important. We can't say directly that someone that's giving up or you know shutting down the business is doing it directly because of the climate change, but it's definitely one of the elements. And the core of all of those elements is this lack of um, biodiversity. I mean, biodiversity could protect against these things. That's the point of biodiversity. Natural selection is if a change happens, the environment will naturally be able to, uh, to be agile and to adapt to those changes. But 
just with adapting to the changes, the team master also has to adapt to their changes. So something that we are seeing more of is like traditional methods of making tea. So in Taiwan, it's a great example of that. Each mountain has a particular way uh, for generations that they've been processing a tea, but now you have this change happening every year. So your leaf quality is changing. So a smart tea master in Taiwan now cannot be indoctrinated uh, to produce one type of tea because if the leaf is different, it might not be suited for it. So, you know, the real groundbreaking progressive tea makers in, in Taiwan and other places are having an open mind and able to, to be flexible. And, and if they're able to do that, they still can produce a good quality product. They still can find the tools and resources to keep their yields in a healthy position. But if they're not ready for those things and ready to be agile, it could be very detrimental to their business. In the field, we're already seeing more people turning to seed seed with a deeper root system and a larger access to deep water when it's very dry, more nutrients when we're not getting the nutrients we need or when we've got runoff on the surface um, is becoming more and more important. A plant with a deep root system that has been planted by seed because most of the clonal cultivars have quite shallow root systems also has more room for starch reserves so they have a little more batteries to keep them going in times of hardship. At the moment we can see in Kenya, people planting new tea are planting it further and further up the mountain. But the problem with the mountain is it's the shape and the further up you go, the less land there is until at the top there's just one square meter. So it's not a solution, but it's a, it's a short term solution. That's the best that they can do.